which I thought was interesting and funny. This Joe Rogan and Spotify thing is absolutely dumb, in my opinion. Really is the dumbest of the dumb. I don't understand any of it. It's all it's a complete overreaction. And again, goes to show how people are so misguided and where their rage should be pointed at. Ghislaine Maxwell essentially got away with murder for the most part. We still don't have a flipping uh, mug. What's that thing called? A um, police photo of her from the court case. We just have illustrations. There's no black book. There's no exposing all these rich elites who are also involved in this scheme of flying in all these underage girls to an island to do all sorts of madness. None of that's been... Uh, none, no one from the media is putting, putting pressure on you know the judicial system, whoever is in charge, to unravel what actually went on there. Nothing's been going on there. Nothing. Just everyone turning a blind eye, turning a blind eye. Big farmers involved in the vaccine. Nothing going on there. But let's go and attack the podcaster guy who happens to be a little bit keen when it comes to the alternative medicines regarding COVID. Yes, is it annoying to be a Joe Rogan fan and hear him continually go on and on about the vaccine and about COVID? Yes, it is, because I'm an actual fan of the podcast. I love it for the breadth of the guests that he has on and the interesting conversations they have. And essentially, if you're a fan of Joe Rogan, you could always basically look, you can basically see yourself in him when you're talking to really smart people like Neil deGrasse Tyson, because he's just like you and I, he's dumb, doesn't know what he's talking about. So to hear him try to intellectually battle or to have a conversation with somebody that's clearly in the three digit number IQ is quite interesting to see. Definitely interesting, especially long form interview. But during the pandemic, he's definitely let COVID break his brain which is understandable too, because he's an older guy, um, you know, he's pumped full of HGH and has a tendency to be a little bit fanatical when it comes to working out. So clearly he's trying to, um, he's trying to, he's trying to basically wrangle in his head how he can avoid dying during a pandemic in regards to this virus, because if there's one thing that rich people don't want to do is die because they want to enjoy their wealth, isn't it? What's the point of amassing all that wealth if you can't live a long and fruitful life and enjoy it for as long as possible? So that makes complete sense. But the one thing I think most nuanced, um, rational, uh, fair Joe Rogan fans would say is that he has been swayed or has have a tendency nowadays to basically interview the same type of person, right? Those three scientists that he interviewed back to back were essentially saying the same things, right? In terms of alternative medicines to COVID and alternative approaches and maybe, you know, the numbers are, are fudged and this and that, you know, whatever, right? All that kind of anti-vax kind of talk. They were basically the same type of person. But what he doesn't do is have enough people who want to basically counteract what he's saying in that regards because it's his show. He doesn't need to. He can do what he wants but it would be nice if you're going to keep talking about covid to have a bit more of a balanced argument because at the moment it's not balanced but what i've noticed with these people they don't want a balanced argument they just want him to stop talking completely because he dared to have people on they don't agree with which i've never understood because i'm always from the school of thought where if i don't enjoy something i just stop listening to it i stop talking about it because i don't enjoy it anymore case in point being Burt Crash's podcast right weird example to make but for the longest time I actually didn't mind it because I still think oddly enough he's still maybe one of the best interviewers when it comes to talking about the craft and the art of comedy but I don't know how many people actually care about you know the, the background stuff when it comes to stand-up and how you organize your show how you can as a tour the marketing side of things constructing jokes I don't know if people care about it, but I do I think there's some parallels to the DJing world and the performance I don't know there's something I like about it and I think he asked some good questions but over the years he's neuroticism he's just scruffiness and his annoying tendencies came to the front came to the forefront and i just had to stop listening to it i think i mentioned it a few times on the podcast where i kind of just stopped listening because he, he became increasingly annoying and i just pulled away from it and i haven't really mentioned it anymore that especially you know i don't think recently i've mentioned it but i don't go and say that he should be taken off all the platforms because he's a raging alcoholic i don't care that's his life let him live it but people nowadays for whatever reason they want him to not talk completely, Joe, because he doesn't speak to the people they want or because he dared to have people on that they don't want to speak to. And the whole reason why people don't trust mainstream media nowadays is because mostly because of that, because they don't talk to people that they shouldn't be talking to. And the other side of things is that people feel like they're lying. At least with Joe, even if you don't agree with what he's saying and you maybe don't think doing kettlebell swings and taking cold baths is going to prevent you from getting COVID, because imagine that was a bit that annoyed me the most. Well, before he got COVID, he legitimately thought him taking cold baths and going in the steam room and doing kettlebell swings and punching and kicking the heavy bag was preventing him from getting COVID. Then he got COVID and suddenly those same things helped him recover quickly. So whatever, isn't it? Old, old man, boomer, rich man's thing. I get it. 
but that was annoying for me but again i just skipped the skip the parts with covid on it or i skipped the covid heavy guest and i just move and wait for the next episode it's not that difficult but most people can't do that i don't know why it is and the thing with joe mentioned as well is that okay you don't like what he has to say about covid cool no problem it's annoying cool no problem misinformation really misinformation when you think about what the cdc was saying this entire time during the pandemic mask up mask wear it don't wear it save for the nurses don't save for the nurses cloth mask works no they don't work two jabs one jab kids need the vaccine now and that kids don't need the vaccine now they need the vaccine boosted this boosted that like how many times have they gone back and forth on their original statements with no acknowledgement of the thing that they said prior and try to retcon it like dsp style as if like they didn't say as if we don't have record of it from beforehand and then you want to say he's misinformation. At least he's trying to learn and speak about these things aloud. Is it annoying? Yes. Is it annoying when he sits there with, what's his name? I forgot who he sat there with. Maybe that Navy SEALs guy. And he was like boasting about having a phone full of bookmarks of articles that he reads concerning COVID. Like a paranoid boomer. Like worried that he's going to drop dead any moment. Going through it. And it's supposed to be, that was, an exp that was him being an expert. Like he's, the reading that he's done is equivalent to all the years that these doctors and scientists have done, you know, studying virology, which is insane because if you sat next to Joe Rogan and told him, hey, I've been watching the UFC for 20 plus years or MMA for 20 plus years, that makes me an expert on the sport and I can also beat people up even without being in the gym, he'd laugh at you. I mean, he'd laugh you out of the room because until you get punched in the face, you don't know what it is to be involved in the fight, clearly. But for whatever reason, these anti-vax people feel like if they read articles, they've suddenly got the knowledge. Again, who cares? We're going to a deep rabbit hole. But essentially, it's all hysteria for nothing. It doesn't really make any sense. Obviously, he had to go on, you know, on his Instagram and try and explain it away. And again, I didn't really mind the the video. I don't think he sold out or he was trying to um, save face. I think if anything, you know, when you get given a hundred million dollars plus, especially if you listen to the people in the comedy scene, a lot of them say it's north of a hundred million, maybe in the high two hundreds. If that's true, crazy. Especially because it's only being licensed to Spotify. It's not even like they got the IP. He can leave after I think it's six or seven years. I think the contract is. So clearly, it's a it's a win win for him in that regard. But if you get 100 million from a corporation, it's not as if you can just do whatever you want. Even Joe Rogan can't. And he's got legitimate fuck you money. And even he's been having, he's having to be um, pulled in and reined in a little bit. Not muzzled, but I think reined in a bit. Like, hey, relax, this and that. And now to the extent now, you know, he came out with a statement basically saying, hey, I'm going to try my best to get more people on who have opposing views to mine. I'm just trying to learn and explore things openly. Um, you know, as everyone else is, I don't want to just speak to some group, some group of people, even though everyone he spoke to recently has kind of, you know, echoed the kind of anti vax sentiment he's, he's kind of been running with. But cool, whatever, that's completely fine. But the reaction to it has been so nutty. Look at this article from The Guardian. Should Spotify ban Joe Rogan? For what? Because he dared to speak about um, alternative medicines. Because he wants to take flipping ivermectin. Who cares? Like, really? Rich rich boomer guy shit. Like, these guys are the ones that go to Vegas for their comedy tours. And I think it's Dave Chappelle or whatever it may be. They book rooms where they all plug themselves into IVs. So that they, they can recover from a night of drinking and, you know, smashing whores and whatnot. These guys aren't normal. That's what rich men do. Do you know what I mean? They, they want to somehow, um, um, you know, they want to somehow live forever, even though they're not going to live forever or are under the illusion that all these things are actually benefiting them or allowing them the ability to get on it more. It makes complete sense that he would be a little bit, you know, COVID skeptical. Of course he would be. Why wouldn't he be? He's got the ability and the funds to be skeptical. Me and you don't. We have to go back to work. We have to go and visit our family. We have to live a normal life. So we don't have the ability to be COVID skeptical. He does. So let, let him be. This is really ridiculous. So let's read some of what they said. This is from uh, someone called Cass Mood, uh, Moody or Muddy. Joe Rogan is a symptom. Joe Rogan isn't a far right ideologue pushing a consistent political agenda. Rather, he's he's a grifter. Aren't you a grifter too, you absolute dullard? I wouldn't know who you were unless you were talking about him. Sometimes these people are just annoying. If you don't like him, don't listen to the show. If you don't like the show, make your own one. It's just like, it's not that hard. Um, it really isn't. I don't understand any of this. It just doesn't make any sense. If anything as well, does this make people want to listen to him more? It's like the Alex Jones effect. He hasn't exactly disappeared, has he, since they took him off every flipping platform. He's essentially still got his hardcore fan base who essentially pay for his life because now they look at him as like, oh no, you are definitely the bastion of truth now because they tried to muzzle you. 
It's like it doesn't have the effect that they want it to have. It says here, um, he is a grifter who hides behind excuses like curiosity, entertainment, freedom, and neutrality to push whatever controversy that sells. Now that controversy is hurting Spotify's bottom line, which is why they have pushed him to publicly apologize. So somehow it's bad to be curious. It's bad to want to provide entertainment. It's bad to levy for freedom. And it's bad to be neutral on issues that you are not that well versed in or issues that are maybe a bit complex. God almighty. Obviously, that will not end with disinformation on this show, on Spotify or many other platforms like YouTube. Um, Joe Rogan is not the problem. He's a symptom. The symptom of the society in which pandering to the mostly right wing, but centrally, so what, what's it? But certainly anti-left minority can be a highly profitable. Um, just like the current Republican Party, they live off liberal outrage rather than any consistent political message. Why don't you try then? That's the thing I don't understand. Let's say it is a grift. Why don't they try the grift? Why don't they attempt... That's the thing that they don't have. They don't have the... The people on the left don't seem to have the messaging that the people on the right seem to have. We had it with Brexit. There was such a clear, coherent message when it came to Brexit. Again, when it when Brexit was pushed through, that message and those promises were thrown out the window. So it definitely got sold a lie. But there was definitely a clear message as to what the pros were with Brexit. With the, uh, the stay in the EU, a lot of people, what was the clear and consistent message behind that? What was it? how could that resonate with the regular working class person especially people that, that don't live in london how could they resonate with that how could they connect with it how would it benefit them how would it kind of allow them to maybe um dream of a better future for themselves and their children none it doesn't exist so they complain about the grift but they don't try and enter into the grift play the game and it, it's like uh, the equivalent of what these um new christian churches are doing now these cool ones where the preachers wear yeezys and they put jeans on and they have cool haircuts that's the only way you're going to connect with the youth you're going to have to be on TikTok. You're going to have to be on Instagram. You can't just be stuffy and be like, you know, our dad's generation of people who are still kind of are very rigid in the way that they go to church and how they do things. No, you have to kind of be a bit loose, be a bit fun, you know, to go on Instagram live a couple of times, say some rap lyrics and maybe hold your mouth over the curse word, play the game. It continues. This is not to minimize the problem. In fact, this is a problem much bigger than disinformation spreading, grifting with millions of listeners. The real problem is not the supply of disinformation, but the demand for it. So, what are you going to do? Are you going to are you going to force us not to listen to to Joe Rogan? Are you going to come to our house and put in fucking earplugs into our ears? Are you going to arrest us for listening to him? Is that what you want to do? Hmm, that sounds a bit totalitarian, don't you think? Um, as long as there is a mass demand, you can either ban or boycott your way to disinformation. Oh, absolutely nonsense. No person here bash what's the thing what's that person called bashkar shankar this is attempt to censor rogan yes people are trying to censor rogan i know many liberal circles would counter that by state um the, what state can censor therefore duh, duh, duh. america's most polarizing podcaster can be anything of sort don't know duh, duh. we've seen enough examples throughout history to censorship not involving the state think of the protest in the universal studio at the last temptation of christ in 1988 or the more dramatic book burnings of the boycotts of the 20th century the question then is whether censorship is ever just a, okay you're just bad word salad another one person here imran ahmed says repel section 230 of the communication decency act in the pandemic the misinformation uh per pernicious effect is to offer false hope to the anxious to dissuade people from following guidance from public health professionals and to make people hesitate before taking vaccine that has saved millions of lives look i've been double jabbed not getting a boost i'm not playing that game leave me alone you told me i could live my life with a double jab i've got it i've got a covid pass let me live my life but let's let's make this clear if you are taking your medical advice from a fucking podcaster you probably you probably deserve whatever consequence you're going to get legitimately like let's be let's be real if you're a grown-up and you're really taking your medical advice from a podcaster and he's making you doubt whether or not you should order ivermectin for flipping amazon and get that instead of getting jabbed up if you're 60 years old and you can't walk outside your house without flipping assistance without being on a scooter you might deserve everything that comes at you you really do you can't blame that guy he's rich bruv he's been rich for the most of his adult life he's been a multi-millionaire able to do what he wants living in la access to all the best like the best scientists and health professionals run to his podcast to basically talk about their new advances and things that they're looking into they run they sprint over to him he's a health fanatic he's been a long he's been a lifelong martial artist somebody has committed his life to basically be for the most part sober right for the most part working out his base level is much higher than most people why would you take his advice from it why would you take his advice it's like following a flipping um victoria's secret model and getting her advice on how you can balance working a nine to five and also working out she doesn't work a flipping nine to five she gets paid to look hot of course she's going to look amazing of course because she's paid to look hot and she has nannies looking after her kids that makes complete sense 
you can't take her advice on every day. Life doesn't make any sense. So if you're taking ivermectin help from Joe Rogan, you deserve everything you're getting. Really do. But if he wants to offer it, let him offer it. It's a free market. You can buy an Android or you can buy an iPhone. What do you want to do? Oh, you're an idiot if you buy an Android. Probably are. Who wants a green bubble? But let people choose. What is this? It continues. Right now, as you read this, there are people um, gasping for air. <laughs> I see Hughes because they heard misinformation online and heard it on a podcast like Rogan Broadcast of Millions. If you are on a if you are on a flipping ICU, right? And you're gasping for air. And the last thing you heard was Joe Rogan's voice telling you to buy ivermectin. It is what it is. Close your eyes and and welcome your maker, mate. Honestly, if that was if that was the reason why you're on that on that bed, it is what it is. The game is the game. You try to play it, you got burned. Whatever. This idea that we're going to go through the entire pandemic with you know no casualties and everyone's going to be hunky dory. Some people have reacted negatively to the vaccine. Did they report about that? There's that story of that girl being covered with all these bumps and scars and shit. The things that people don't talk about that. Or people going in, you know, having lung issues and whatnot, and maybe not breathing correctly after the fact. These complications happen, but for the most part, what we've seen from information we have available masks especially if you have an n95 uh, the ability to maybe wipe down your stuff and maybe use antiseptic cream whatever it may be antibacterial whatever blah 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 um the ability to have a vaccine all these things are the best ch chance that we have to combat this virus and there's no denying we've got here at the moment because the majority of the population around the world especially in western countries have decided the vaccine is the best way forward yes there's a small minority of people who want to go the opposite way cool but this idea that we're going to get 100% adoption rate is absolutely nuts. Who, who thought this? Who thought this is ever going to happen? Especially with the internet. There's too much information out there. There's too many people offering alternative points of view for us to, for you to feel as if like everyone's going to have exactly the same POV. They're not going to have that. It doesn't make any sense. It's not realistic. So this is inevitable to happen. But, you know, maybe I'm talking on my ass. Um, and then, yeah, whatever. More people talking rubbish there. And then, of course, people come out and want to correct your organs talk about coronavirus stories 24 hours of the apology day nitpicking and going into it another article here goes to the bbc saying four claims check for fact checking have you when's the last time you've seen uh, any news you know website or platform dedicate a page to fact checking the claims of politicians when have you heard that? When does that happen, really? They never do that. But now they want to do it to a podcaster. They want to fact check him, right? And of course, one claim here. The claims are quite funny, though. A vaccine can alter your genes. Another claim, I have a vaccine can cure COVID. Another claim, if you get vaccinated after having COVID, you're at greater risk of harmful side effects. You just read these headlines and you don't need to listen. You could either listen if you're curious, just for the sake of it, or you could just skip ahead like everyone else does. Just press that five or 15 minute button and just keep it moving. Or 15 seconds, I think, button. Another person, claim for young people, the health risk for the vaccine are greater than COVID. That is obviously to be argued. Who knows? And then if we want to make you laugh even more, we've got this Toblerone guy, flipping Brian Stelter from flipping CNN, um, complaining about Americans trusting Rogan over his own network. So instead of getting into the flipping um coliseum and battling rogan in a battle of ideas he's there on his flipping um chair where he's flipping legs on touch the floor with his little toblerone head or his little malteser head arguing for or moaning or crying that people aren't listening to him as opposed to listen to rogan like what are you talking about what are you talking about and then of course to make it even more sweeter one of the people that was spearheading the campaign against, oh, Rogan spreading different information. I'm not going to be on your platform anymore if you have him on there. Neil Young decided to make a, you know, a bit of a moral stand in terms of I don't agree with Joe Rogan's points of view. So I'm going to take my content off of Spotify and put it on another platform because I don't agree with what he's saying. But look where he decided to go. Curtis Wall Street Journal. Neil Young pushes Amazon Music to fans after pulling content from Spotify amid Joe Rogan controversy. Are they taking us for mugs? follow the money so all of this posturing all this moral grandstanding you go and stand next to mr jeff bezos that's your solution to this you think spotify is so bad or what you're going to say so bad that you're willing to stand next to flipping jeff bezos on amazon huh oh yeah 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 everyone's full of shit everyone's full of shit again i wish we could all be grown-ups and just listen to the things we want to listen to if we don't like something we just ignore it like most people do but people don't do that people are just too sensitive they want everything to be policed the way they want it and to look a certain way i don't necessarily understand why it's like that it just is one of those unfortunate events or features of the modern world that we live in it's flipping frustrating but god damn it man grow the hell up everybody please enough is enough
So what? He speaks to people that want to take ivermectin instead of getting a vaccine. Why does it matter? Why does it honestly matter? Why? It really doesn't matter. For the most part, we all know what the sensible advice is. Follow the science. Follow the doctors. Independent ones. There's many on YouTube. There's many on podcast platforms that you can speak to and get you know alternative points of view. The information is readily available. If you cannot deduce or figure out how to do it, there's no hope for you. What more do you need? What more do you need? You want someone to hold your hand the entire way through? We have all the information out there. Make an informed decision, especially for your own family. If you decide not to get it, that's cool, whatever. I, I decided where my line ends. My line ends at booster. Now nah, I'm not doing it anymore. You told me if I get the two jabs and I have my vaccine passport, which already is an invasion of my privacy, and, you know, is arts. It kind of breaks every single, loads of ideas I have in my head about how I want to navigate around the world. But I did it because the benefits far outweigh the negatives in terms of me being able to move around and do the things I want to do. Now you want me to do the booster. And now we're at a point where supposedly on my COVID pass, it says that it's going to expire on the 22nd. And there's this rumor going around that allegedly, if you don't get the booster, they're not gonna be able to, you're not going to be able to renew your COVID pass. Now they put me in a predicament. What am I going to do? Am I going to be one of those guys that buys a fake um, pass online because I don't want to do the booster thing, which is obviously more harm than good in that respect? Or am I going to then acquiesce and bend the knee and get the booster just so I can live my everyday life? It's all a joke thing. But again, I made the informed decision. I decided to move on and that's it. I'm not complaining about money. I'm just growing up and moving on with it. That's all it may be. And again, it's Spotify. If you don't like it, you close the app down. You go on something else. You maybe skip his episode, you unsubscribe, whatever it may be. What is this? This is absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. If anything, this is why they signed him up on the platform in the first place. It's what if I didn't pay those millions just to get him on there to speak to flipping Ari Shafir every week. They put him on there so he could, you know, generate some debate, you know, maybe go a bit viral from time to time. This is good for business. This is good for business. If they really wanted this guy to stop podcasting, they just stop listening to him. But they don't. They don't know how to... Uh, I don't know, man. These people are insane. They're nuts. They're nuts in the head. They don't provide a coherent or a convincing enough counter argument, but then they want you to stop listening to it completely. It's not even like they're saying, okay, listen to this person instead because they're correct. This guy's talking out of his ass. No, you should not listen to him at all. We're going to come to your house or we're going to come, you know, to your house flipping Chinese style, right? Chinese government style. And we're going to weld you into your house like they did in the early parts of the pandemic. Or we're going to come with people with hazmat suits and forcibly put you in flipping, um, you know, vans and spray you down and inject you with the, with the vaccine when you, whether you know you want it or not. Like, come on, man. Everyone needs to relax. Everyone needs to relax. But, you know, they probably won't because we're all just flipping crazy and going nuts and whatnot. But I've had enough, man. Please.